Oh my god, it was garbage. Is this, is this, this your work? Dude. Are you That's kidding? not your work. Watch your photography? I don't know, let me see. Yes, all those are my pictures. <laughs> you made 35,000 <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? Look, look, look. I've gained respect. I'm like, I've lost that. respect for you. I've lost respect for the industry. Yeah, yeah. He didn't make this comp. This is insane. This is, hey. just, here's the problem. Can we put can we put this in the in the no. tutorial while we're talking shit about the design? No, because no, no. the girl's like the She's gonna <laughs> watch this. Are you out of your fucking mind? Oh no. <laughs> this is the best part of the whole I know, you say it's the best part until this, you put it in the tutorial no. and I have to spend my profit on that thirty-five thousand killing you. So I remember back in 2010, I had done uh, a shoot for EA Sports uh, World Cup 2010 uh, soccer video game, and we were splashing paint on people, yes. right? Yes. And the whole idea was like, you know, we're, we're photographing soccer fans and we're splashing them with the paints of their opposing fan base. So we do it behind the scenes on it, and I mean, you can't even capture how fun and how great it was, but I think we did a pretty good job. Now, it was really important to me at that time in my career to project to a client how much fun we were having doing our hobby while actually delivering cool photos. So you have to show cool photos and like you have to show the results, but in the meantime, just show like how much fun these yeah. kids are running around taking pictures. That was our goal. That was my goal. That was my like instruction to the video editor. And here we are making some behind the scenes videos and I'd made some before, but that was the one that all of a sudden I get an email from Patrick Hall going, hey, you know, I got this blog, doing this thing. I'm, cool. I'm so glad I, after doing this tutorial, I'm glad I contacted him and made sure ha. that I Hey, I'm gonna do this thing. Can you give me a couple like yeah, words and, of your own? And you were like, "Hey, man, like, you know, do you mind if we use your video? Like, we're doing like this thing where we're showing like behind the scenes videos just to show like what photo shoots are." And I was like, "That's cool, yeah, man. Like, absolutely, you can totally like, use what it." What is f stopper? No, I, I didn't look it up. You asked nicely. You were kind, considerate. You told me what you were doing. Awesome, everybody wins. That was the beginning of our relationship. It, uh. Dude, I, I, it I remember up. subscribing to, I think it was Vimeo. You were on Vimeo, right? I was on Vimeo. I subscribed to his Vimeo, and every time a video came out, I was like, dude, this Monty Ison guy is doing Free like content stuff. for F Stoppers, man. Yeah, yeah, and, like, yeah, and he would reach out. Because you, most you kept videos. doing it. You were one of the early adapters. You were putting it out there. I was putting out behind the scenes videos to show my clients how fun we were on set. Because you had like you had uh, Sports Illustrated stuff, right? I uh, yeah, I have videos from all kinds of stuff. Sports yeah. Illustrated to ESPN, EA Sports, Nike, like whatever it was. It was like HBO, like whatever I was shooting. I was doing a behind the scenes video on almost everything. Yeah, and um, because I wanted my clients to understand, we were more fun than the other two people bidding on a gig, and that if our photography were like neck and neck you know you're gonna have a better time with us and you know we're still gonna deliver. It's such a simple concept. Just make a video that shows you're better than the other two guys you're bidding against. It wasn't that someone who was gonna hire me went on Vimeo and saw it and was like, I saw that video, I wanna hire you. But I had the content, so I was making my flash drive as my business card, so I was putting that behind the scenes video on there and and every was, time it got a little tighter, it got a little better. It did, it, it did. The, the, the value, the production value got better. At first it was just like a bunch of fucking wild men with cameras, like just being silly, being stupid, you know, filming each other, picking each other's nose like on the back of the bus, like whatever it was. Yeah. And... 20 videos later... 20 videos later, my message was getting tighter. Production value was getting better. I was less of a wild card to my client, like, well, he's, is he gonna say that kind of stuff and make those kinds of jokes? Yes, he is. Well, I was, but we were editing it out. Yeah. So we were curating a little bit more of how I, what you could expect from me if you hired me. 
And we were putting that on my flash drive. So when I would go on meetings, I would give that to people. And now I was putting it in front of the people who were gonna hire me. Art buyers or creative directors from agencies, they're not going to f-stoppers. They're not going to a site that's covering a photographer or a photographer blog. No way. I had to go make sure I put it in front of them. So for me, when we talk about marketing, I'm always like, I need to get in front of these people because if I get in front of them, I can sell me. I can sell what we're doing, like the content is legit, but I can sell me. And if I can sell me and the content's legit, we'll sway them to give us tons of money to go make more behind the scenes videos and do pictures. I have a whole bunch of shoots that I love for different reasons, right? But probably the one that I love to like think about me working on or like think about achieving and everything was uh, working on the Adidas work for Beijing for the, for the Olympics in China back in 2008. And how were how you chosen for this? Good story. So I go to Japan and I go to show work and I have, and I'm scheduled to go to Shanghai the following week. I'm gonna do meetings in Japan because I had just done a bunch of Nike work with them. And then, and so I was like, yeah, Japan's awesome. And I'm gonna go meet with a bunch of agencies there. And then I'll go to Shanghai because they have the Olympics coming up. Well, I'm a dumbass, obviously. I didn't figure that, or take into account that the Chinese New Year was coming. I couldn't get a meeting to save my life. You were there when? 2007. But like January 31st? Yeah, yeah, In I think it's January. Like I would have to look when the Chinese New Year hit that year. Everyone's on vacation. There's not a person in China answering like their emails, anything I'm like. So I extend my trip in Japan because Japan's awesome. I see as many agencies as possible. And I remember clearly one Japanese producer. I'm meeting with him and I say, yeah, I'm going to Shanghai next week. He says, oh, be careful of China. And I said, <laughs> um, it, was, it was Master Splinter. And I said, what a, uh, he was oh. in a hoodie. Yeah, and I said, well, what, what should I be careful of? He says, China. Everything. <laughs> I was like, what? Gosh, what? Well, that's kind of that's shitty advice. Like, that doesn't give me anything. Um, <laughs> so I realized that Chinese New Year is going on. I pull the plug. I change my flight and I go back to New York. I don't go to Shanghai. I don't go to Shanghai. I don't go to China. But I go back to China two weeks later. I make a separate trip. I set up all the meetings that I want to, reach out to all the agencies, and I go and I meet with, I don't know, probably 14, 15 agencies in Shanghai to show them work. And when I go in to see TBWA Shanghai, I hit it off. They have a Singaporean producer there who's awesome. Can I ask you real quick, how in the world did you get 14 meetings in a country that you've never visited before and people can't get meetings in agencies like one in America. How do you do that? It's a really they good can't get meetings, right? It's it's a really good question, Lee. Um, I'm good at what I fucking do. That's the answer. Oh, well, you, you might need to expand upon that. Okay, let me expand what upon that. What did you do to line up those agencies? And so I just did a giant Nike job for, uh, for Widening Kennedy out of Tokyo. And I've done a series of really cool stuff leading up to that with, you know, NBA is wildly popular in China. So all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I just shot Dirk Nowitzki. I just shot LeBron James. I just did this. I'm showing this stuff and they're like, we well, want to do that. The other part is when you are a New York photographer, it opens doors in every other market except New York. Lee, if you named a market right now, you said, uh, give me a foreign market, name it, and buy, I mean, right now we're Monday night, 
by Wednesday morning, I'm going to have 10 meetings. I reach out to people at this, at this stage, they see, you know, the caliber of the clients I've worked with and they go, I want to work on that. Or they see something that I worked on that where they're like, that won these awards and I want to win these awards. People actually will answer their phone or answer their email. And in New York, it's harder to get a door open than it is anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, back when I started my career, when I realized I'm not getting the play in New York, I went on a, a world tour. I went on an international tour for a month, went to four different cities. London, I booked 12 meetings. Amsterdam, I booked like eight meetings. Like these are back to back. And all it was, I'm saying, I'm a New York photographer. This is what I do. This is the work that I've done. And they're like, yeah, of course we'll meet with you. Hmm. A New York photographer plays bigger everywhere else in the world. China, I had just worked on some big stuff. I show them some big stuff and they're like, we want to do big stuff. Now they were an emerging market at the time. They were on their way to trying to tell the world they were a first world country. We have the Olympics coming, this is how it goes. So having a foreigner come in and say, I wanna work with you, I wanna meet with you, the doors were open. So I had 14 meetings, went through, met with all these agencies. One of them that hit really, really like close to home, everything was like jiving, was TBWA Shanghai. And part of it was because they had a freelance producer who had just done a project with them. She was Singaporean, she was awesome. And I hear her asking me questions that are different than the questions I hear at all the other agencies. She's asking me like logistical questions about like how do you do this, this, and this? Because I see her like trying to figure out like, she knows she has a project. She's trying to figure out if I'm right for that project. She's figuring it out for herself. She's like, how do you do this? And you're like, but, oh, well. But part of it is like, I saw you did this here and it applies to what I'm getting ready to do. So she's asking me these questions and I'm like, these are the best questions I've been asked this entire trip to this country. It's because you're Singaporean. I love Singaporeans when they're working in Shanghai. We jive, like we think the same. They came up with like a Western culture. Like they, they grew up in a British colony, so it's Western thought, but they speak Chinese. So they turn out to be great managers, great producers, and they think I'm funny. That's half of the battle. So when I, when I go there, they're, they're hearing what I'm saying. Within 10 days, I have sketches in front of me saying, we're thinking about doing this job. How would you do it? And what are your numbers? And I'm dealing with that Singaporean producer who's asking the great questions. They, uh, they send me some sketches and they say, this is what we're thinking about doing. How would you go about it? So the whole premise is uh, having a bunch of Olympic athletes up on top of a podium and that the entire podium is made of Chinese people holding them up. Kind of like the entire country has come together to raise these people up to be like the top of the heap. You are supreme. We are the best. We want all these golds, that kind of thing. But it's about the support of the people because without the people, these Olympic athletes would not be there. Like that was like the, the basic idea and concept of this. And so uh, we had to photograph, we photographed. And you guys had like scaffolding and all this stuff, like people all, like this looks like 500 people looks like a lot of people. Yes, um, and it is, but we, I built steel scaffolding with platforms on it so then the Olympic athletes would be up on top and people would be all climbing up to create this, this shape and this form. And we photographed people all along the skin of this scaffolding, put them all together, retouched them together and made like a, like a perfect podium. And then there's an entire crowd around it which is supposed to represent the billions of people in China. So for that section, we hired 300 Chinese people, put them out on a soccer pitch. I went up onto a, uh, on a, like a scissor lift at a specific length that matched 
kind of like the angle and the height that I had already photographed the athletes in the different cities they were training in. We already photographed the scaffolding with the people as like a skin around it and hanging all around it. And so camera angle's the same, we're there, and we hire 300 people, but we have to make a billion people out of 300. So um, we hired an, uh, a soccer field, a soccer pitch, and I took rope and we tied off squares, square sections all the way along. So we'd take 300 people in a square, they would cheer in four different directions, depending on, so we had options. They would cheer there, straight at me, corner, there, 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 there. Everyone shift, move, go to the next Cheer, square. Shift, next square. Cheer in every direction, next square. And we did it back and forth, back and forth, all the way up and down the soccer pitch. Now, you could shoot a crowd of people and then retouch them all together. But the problem is, is your horizon line actually rises. And it looks weird. People don't know why it looks weird, but there's no perspective to it. Perspective, looking at this crew here versus looking at a crew that's 250 feet away from me. Here, they look like this. There, they look a little bit more like this, right? Okay. Yeah. So you move those people way back right. there. So if you photograph 300 people here and then you just retouch them to make a whole crowd, your horizon line rises instead of goes away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So if you fucking, if you go, well, we're just gonna photograph the, we'll photograph these people and then we're just gonna retouch them all the way back. That's the easy way to do it. And it's also a way to make your horizon line rise and it doesn't match your podium or the lines on it. And, and 2% of people will notice. But. You know what, you say 2%. 2% who know what's going on, notice. Yeah. 40% look at it and just feel uncomfortable because they don't know what's wrong, but they just know something's wrong. And the other 60% are like... My job in any big retouch job is to suspend disbelief, to photograph things so then it actually could be happening. And that is the concept that they gave me. That's what we shot, that's what we delivered. And it turned out to be really a turning point in my career and maybe the biggest photo I ever did. And when I say the biggest, I don't mean because we had 504 people on set. I mean, like, it may have been the biggest shot that I've done in my career. How many now. photos came out of that whole job? Uh, we did four. Uh, we did four executions simultaneously for that job. And... It was, you know, uh, an entire campaign during the Chinese Olympics. And, like, if you were there, it's odd walking through, like, Shanghai or Beijing and seeing a tornado of your work. Their media buy, it was fucking everywhere. Like, it was disorienting to me to see my work. I mean, I can't... Every even... three shops. Like, Every boom, three boom, shots, boom, boom. and then you look at a building, a 30-story building, and it's wrapped with your image. And you're like, they did a whole building wrap on that? Like, it was everywhere. Awesome. Like, Adidas decided they were going to outspend Nike. It was their first year as a title sponsor of the Olympics, and they went strong. Um, as a photographer, it was humbling. It was awesome. I, it, like, you can't even describe what it was like to work on the campaign that turned out to be the biggest campaign in Chinese history. What's the budget on the biggest job of your career? We were just south of a million dollars. A million dollars? Well, but we were south of it. So, well, south, but... <laughs> <laughs> but that's the largest media buy ever in the history of China? Or this, has nothing, this has nothing to do with media buy. That has to do with uh, production of the photo. So that is all photo production. Your media buy, the costs on that are different on every job. So, but and, the and those media, and they're those bigger. Media, and those media buy numbers have nothing to do with our budget, but their media buy was 